Story 1, My wife left me after she got in shape and now wants to get back together. Original post, May 6, 2024. I am not sure why I am posting this. I probably want some validation as my life turned upside down recently. I, 32M, was married to my wife, 33F, for 4 years and we had a great marriage so far. I was madly in love with my wife. She fell into depression mainly due to her job in 2022. I tried to support her in every way and suggested her going to gym or doing any kind of sports to de-stress. I had my own depression episode before we got married and what saved me was going to gym. She agreed to that and we started going there together. I could not go as frequent as in the past since my workload got heavier after my promotion. However, I tried my best to be there with her. She used to be a bit chubby, which I loved, and after seeing some changes with her body, she started to go there regularly. It also helped her with depression and she got better. I was really happy to see her get better and livelier. She looked more confident, got more aggressive in bed and so on. However, after a while that confidence level started to affect our relationship for worse. She started going to the parties and going outside to a point she completely stopped doing her share in the house. That proceeded with me seeing her getting flirty with a guy at a meetup we went. I communicated my feelings to her and she dismissed these. After several of these, I had her sit down with me and told her that she is riding high on her newly found confidence and emotions right now. I clearly stated she should not make decisions or actions according to that confidence right now. I know it well. It was one of my worst traits. I used to be extremely emotionally driven in the past. I suggested we go to a marriage counselor and hell broke loose. She said vile things to me like how she realized she settled down with me after getting better and she could do much better than me. She said I am insecure and other things. This woman used to be sweetest person on the earth and I was shocked after hearing the things she said to me. She filed for divorce the following month and I did not hear much from her other than some lawyer talks. Our court seeing is scheduled to be next month and my lawyer told me there is a high chance it'll be concluded then. There is not much to share. Similar income, only shared asset is our joint account, similar savings and no kids. House is my mom so it's out of division. I accepted my marriage is going to end like that. Last week she called crying and told me she regrets everything. She apologized over and over again but I felt disappointed. Not angry, not sad but just disappointed. She did not text me nor call me even once since the divorce started. I did not even know where she was since she just left the home. I told her there is no going back now. She has been messaging me non-stop. My family supports my decision and tell me I should not back down. My in-laws were shocked when they heard about the divorce. They are now telling me to rethink everything. I will 99.9% .9 not back down but as I said just looking for validation and maybe wanted to vent. Thank you for reading. Relevant comments. OOP responds if there was a real reason why his wife left him after getting healthy. OOP. I did not even understand why she left me after getting in shape. I am in shape, too. It's not like I was overweight. It has been a while since going to the gym before we started together but I was not in bad shape at all. I could probably get back to my shredded years with one year of regular workout. Immaculate 329, how long were you separated? Did she tell you why she made the mistake? OOP, about 5 months. She did not specify it. I am not sure what happened that made her call me crying. OOP on if his wife was having confidence with her weight or not. OOP, thank you for sharing your perspective. My wife was not even overweight or extremely big, just chubby. It actually made her more attractive for me with all the curves. I would even go as far as to say she was more attractive for me before she lost weight. That behavior shift just from losing weight seemed incredibly weird to me. Update June 23, 2024. We are officially divorced. There was not much to share so it went smooth as a butter according to my lawyer. I've never talked to her other than through lawyers as much as she wanted me to. She tried to talk to me one-on-one -on -one and get closure but I just do not want that. It's not that I do not care why she left me, what she did during that time. I just do not want to know. I've been living without her for months now. At first, it was difficult and I cried all night some days, but after few months, I feel like I came to accept everything. What peace will it give to learn what and why when I already accept everything other than hurting me? For once, I want to prioritize my peace of mind in this whole process. My parents and friends are here to support me, and I am glad that I have such a great support circle. As for what my plans are, renovate my office room in the house, get back to the gym and live my best life. I've been wanting to renovate my office room for a while now and that's what I'll start with. I started hitting the gym at the same time. I believe my body is good but I have some extra fat. Dieting proved itself difficult because I am a tiramisu addict. For the dating part, I uploaded few apps and tried out how I am doing. I got decent number of matches but realized I do not feel like doing it right now. 
I'll focus on my own hobbies, well-being and wants for now. Thank you for all the support and help in the last post. Relevant comments. Shenanigans 20. I'm really sorry you had to go through this awful experience. I agree with you that closure is just for her. As you shed all the tears and pain you needed to. All the best for you. Keep looking after yourself and I am proud of how you have handled yourself during this difficult time. From a cyber friend. OOP. I think I gave myself my own closure and the conclusion is, having my best life and moving on. That's the best thing I can do. Thanks for the good wishes. Choo choo underscore. When the person who chooses to leave wants closure, just shut the door and keep it shut. They only want to make themselves feel better about their decision, no matter how bad it screwed you over. Bigger and better things to look forward to OP. All the best. Story 2, AITA for walking out of my engagement party and refusing to answer calls for three days? My, now, ex-boyfriend proposed four days ago. Let's call him Tim. Tim and I have been together for two years. We talked about marriage, we are both 26, and kids, etc. Until last week I thought I had the perfect love life. Now, Tim has his best friend Mimi, fake name. Tim also has a friend group he is very close to. The problem throughout our relationship was, that Tim would place me last whenever his friends were involved. He missed a promotion dinner for my work because Mimi's dog was throwing up. He missed Diwali celebrations with my family because his friends wanted him to help paint their new house. Plus, some issues during his teenage years involving his friends resulted in his dad threatening to take away his inheritance and distribute it to relatives. For context, his dad introduced us, until last year, before I left the workplace which I joined straight after college, his dad was my boss. I still see him as a father figure and respect him a lot. Now, I have outright told Tim that I don't like public proposals. I am very introverted, and having eyes on me during a loving moment will only cause me anxiety. Tim said he understood and promised he wouldn't do one when he proposed. Another thing I told Tim was that Mimi treats me passive-aggressively because I'm kind of an anxious person, I have mild OCD, and asked him to not involve her in our affairs. Tim said Mimi only wants the best for us. I kind of didn't press the issue after he got defensive. Thursday, after I entered my flat, I was greeted by all of Tim's friends, with Tim in a suit, and a ring in hand. I kid you not, my flat was swarmed. There were people I didn't even know. Before Tim even said anything Mimi chimed in and said, Chill OP, dear God, this is not the time to make that face. I saw red. I was having a severe anxiety attack, as I don't do well with lots of people. I calmly told them that there would be no proposal and to get the hell out of my flat. They looked like in shock, so I just left my flat with just my purse, called my best friend on the way and told her to get them out, and just called a car service and sat in the car, crying, for two hours and went to my cabin I brought. I texted my parents, so they wouldn't worry and told them to not take Tim's calls, switched off my phone, and stayed there. Luckily I had enough cash to make a grocery run, and the cabin was used last month. I only switched my phone on when I was calling a car and saw the barrage of calls and texts. I called Tim in the car, and he sounded defeated and kept on apologizing and crying. I told him it was over. Turns out my best friend told his dad, who was so mad, he told him that he would only get half his inheritance. I now feel that I reacted very badly and could have handled it with grace. I might have let my anxiety take over and overreacted and I cost him his money. Ita, edit, my ex-BF and I are both Indians. One of the reasons why Tim's dad likes me is that I am from the same culture, though I am not comfortable with this reasoning. I am a lawyer and make enough money to buy and maintain a flat and a cabin. Tim only has access to my flat. Update June 23, 2024. Most people in both my previous posts said that it wasn't my fault, and after properly speaking to my family and friends, I realized that I was indeed, not that wrong. The bit about changing the locks, I'll get to that later, but my best of friend, who is staying with me for a few days, said that she checked and everything in my flat was in the right place, so I guess that's one problem less. People who keep sending me DMs saying it is fake because I own a cabin, I have no answer for that. Yes, I make enough money to live comfortably on my own and also have an extra place that I like to go to alone. And to some really funny gentlemen who have sent me more DMs on how I'd never find a husband if I didn't learn to keep my mouth shut, please eat shit. I don't have the mental space to argue with Ink Els right now. For the main update, I went and spoke to Tim's dad first. He was very mad at his son. He kept saying that Tim had finally crossed limits with that group and asked me to forgive his son. 
I respectfully told him that even if I got back with his son, my dad wouldn't approve. Which was true, and I said that, because I knew for Tim's dad, my dad's opinion mattered more. His dad then said that he was deeply sorry and that he would still support me if I needed help in the future. And I decided to take the things he left at my flat to him because I didn't want him over mine ever again. Tim said he was very sorry, that he hadn't thought I was being genuine about my social anxiety, he has seen me get panic attacks in crowds, and he thought that his friend's enthusiasm would be a positive thing. I asked him why none of my friends were there, and he said that because I have a very small number of friends, he thought we would have a nice dinner with them to share the news. Not gonna lie, his words hurt, because his friends deserved to be at the proposal, but mine didn't because there were only five of them. Tim also mentioned that Mimi didn't like one of my friends because she was a single mom, and it just made me more mad. I told him that he would be better off marrying Mimi because it was quite clear everything in his life was about her. I told him that he was a shit partner and the reason why I wouldn't marry him and his dad is going to cut off his money is because he has let Mimi bully me throughout our relationship and it was Mimi's words that made me leave the proposal. Tim looked very hurt and started apologizing. He also said that he never cheated on me, that he loved me, and he promised to do better. I told him I'd give him a chance if he cut off every one of his friends and moved with me to another city. He started crying at that and said he possibly couldn't live that way and asked me to reconsider. I told him I knew he would never choose me over his friends. And I was feeling very petty, so I told him that Mimi would also never choose him over her successful boyfriend nor would any of his friends choose him over their own families. He told me he was very sorry and that he would limit contact with them, but I told him there was no way I was going to be with him. I dropped his things, and I wanted to cry because he wouldn't even get up from the sofa or apologize or say that he wouldn't speak to Mimi again. He just turned his face away. I left. Mimi later came by to my flat and asked if we could talk, so I let her in. My friend says it was a dumb move, but I was working and crying at the same time, so I wasn't thinking much. She said that Tim yelled at her for ruining his relationship, and she didn't know what she did wrong. I honestly had zero energy for her and just told her if she was done talking to please leave. Mimi said that she just wanted to be there for Tim, and me making his dad cut him off was an awful thing to do. I then asked why she made a comment she knew would piss me off when I was being proposed to. Mimi replied that it was a joke and I shouldn't have taken her seriously. I just asked her to leave, after that. She said she hoped I would be happy in the future, so I guess that was it. All of Tim's friend's numbers are blocked, including Mimi's. I blocked Tim and I'll get the locks changed next week. I wish I could write something positive here, but alas. Hopefully, there will be no more updates on this. Relevant comments. Responsible of front 900. I think you did the best, but if possible, could you explain these are friends of your ex better to me? Like is it some kind of friendship relationship where they only stay close to him because he pays for everything for everyone? OOP. They are friends from school. Mimi included. They are a group of 8 to 9 people and 2 of them are engaged and 1 is married. Tim is, technically, the most well-to-do guy in the group. Well, his dad is. Plus, Tim always helps them out. He helps build projects, always sets up decorations at parties himself whenever any of them hosts, and even pays a few of their bills and always gives them gifts. I thought he was a very good man, and very generous, but never did any of that stuff for me. Nor for his dad. He only helps out his friends. 